When building front-end applications, more often than not, you need to be able to represent different entities in a very similar fashion, such as picking users and groups from a select input or aggregating search results within a single list. Having separate components for each of these entities is possible, but you're probably duplicating a lot of the code in the process. TypeScript generics, along with some function parameters, come in very handy to make generic components that are very easy to work with. Let's see how it's done. Here is the scenario. We have two types of objects, bear and kitten. These are very simple objects. They hold similar information, but their structure is a bit different. In our use case, the user needs to be able to choose a bear from a list and also a kitten from a list. The list should look and behave exactly the same. Now that we know the data that we're dealing with and our use case, let's see how the component looks. This is our select list component. Let's break it down. First, let's take a look at the props definition. It's an interface named select list props. It takes a type parameter denoted by the letter T. This is our generic. In this declaration, our type T must extend an object with an id string property. TypeScript will enforce this rule so that any object we pass into this component must have an id string declaration. Now, let's look at the props themselves. Items is an array of T objects. It's essentially an array of anything that complies with our T definition. Get label, which is a function that takes an item t as a parameter and returns a string. Get image URL, which also takes an item t as a parameter and returns a string. On select, that is a function taking an item t as a parameter and not returning anything. And finally, an optional selected property of type t. Now, let's look at the component itself. It's a functional stateless component that takes a T generic with the same definition as the props interface. It returns an unordered list with a list item for each item in the items array. Each item contains an onClick event listener, which will call our onSelect function for the given item when clicked. It will contain an image and some text. To get the image source, it will use the getImageURL prop from that specific item. And it will get the text with the getLabel prop. Additionally, it's going to have some style changes for a selected item. We will use the id string that we require on the definition as the component key. It's a very, very simple component. Now, let's see how we can use this component to display our lists. As you can clearly see, both usages for bears and kittens look almost identical. Apart from the getImageURL and getLabel functions, but will fetch the right data for the component to use. It's worth noticing that I don't actually have to pass the type parameter here, as TypeScript will infer it from usage. Again, this was a very simple implementation, but you can take this concept and apply it to whatever component you need. You can find a link to the code of this example in the description. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.